Hey, guess what? It really is. It's story time again. Yay! So gather all together, be as little children, and don't don't forget Mickey and Minnie too sometimes. They're all in for it too. Big hugs for everybody. We got to be as little children. You know, people have forgotten how to uh, play. And we got to be as little children because all children love and have loved. So welcome to this presentation. And uh, it's time to ring the, uh, the bell of the kingdom age. So let's get on down to it. It's time to uh, bless the Lord. And what did I do with my glasses? Ah, that's the worst part. Well, while I'm looking for my glasses, a little reminder, it's time for peace, love, and joy, kingdom age style. And we can have the desires of our heart if we will do what the Lord wants. And what he wants is for us to unite in love. Uh, that's what he prayed for in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. If it wasn't possible, then he wouldn't have known what the heck he was even talking about. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's time. And I'm looking all over for my glasses. I shall be right back. I thought I had them. They're probably on my head. No, not on my head. So while I'm gone, I'll leave Mickey over here to keep his eye on you. There we go. Uh, let's see. Keep that eye on him, Mickey. Don't let him go away. Where did he go? I don't know. Oh, now my night light. See, technical difficulties. That's the problem. Oh, I'm sitting on him right there. Right on the floor. <sighs> so, welcome. And uh, I'm going to get right into a, a vision. And uh, I know that this will bless your heart and, and uh, hopefully go deep into your heart and, and soul. We need to praise him endlessly, people, now and evermore, and always be exceedingly happy if we're able to impart his righteousness unto even our own family, little by little, day by day, as we shine forth his magnificent light uh, that's already shining from within us. Uh, this karma happens, the law of sowing and reaping, and we get back what we put out. Put out love, you're going to get love back. And be not ignorant of another fact. Uh, our physical mother brought forth our bodies into this world, our physical, but our true uh, heavenly uh, father has been like El Shaddai, a motherly uh, loving God over us. Uh, feminine characteristics in that name if you research it. So neither should we be unaware that our Lord of life and giver of it abundantly is now saying uh, new words of hope and inspiration in these end time hours. His word was only closed until the time of the end. And now the Lord uh, says through his spirit of prophecy, he says, behold, this is my work of the kingdom age and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. It is our inheritance as long as we don't commit the unforgivable sin of letting our light go out. That's spiritual suicide. Um, so verily as the spirit of God indwells my life into all people, so too are their spirits quickened as lightning flashes, he says, for the flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. Now, um, at this point, um, in a, a vision I was having, I was sitting on an ivory couch, and uh, I was in a prostrate position, uh, flat on my belly, in, in front of uh, uh, angelic citizens from the Most High that had come down, and uh, they were uh, angels. And uh, there was a, one of them appeared as like a, a lady of, of hope, and faith and love. And um, uh, she said to me, she said, Oh, Daniel, do not bow down to us, but we are but fellow servants of the one that was, is, and shall be once again. Therefore, arise and sit back down next to me as these other six of our trinity uh, now prepare to take leave of us. Uh, actually, there was seven altogether, and the one uh, had the appearance of a lady, but uh, 
I, I, I discerned that these actually, I thought they were angels for, until retrospective of uh, some time later, it dawned on me that these were the seven spirits of God that had come unto me in my dream. So, but I'm going to read it as what I originally wrote as angels because uh, people are so... <laughs> Uh, but that's what the Bible says, that there are seven spirits of God. So immediately, one by one of them did say farewell, and they departed back into the great beyond. Two by two, they um, did they receive wings for their flight, and three by three, did they all fly off into the presence of our Lord of all creation. And as they left, the clouds were but dust under their feet, which were shod with sandals of great importance, being laced with some powerful cords of a, a mighty mission that was in front of them. Now, prior to them first coming forth, though, I had been sitting uh, next to one of them on the left side. Uh, and since I knew our Lord was seated on the right side of our Father of Fathers, I then asked the, the, that one, may I get up off the ground and sit on your right hand side too? <laughs> so then she took me by the hand and slowly raised me up and softly said, no, my sweet man, for the right side is only reserved for those who have suffered some very great things for the Lord's sake. So don't be sad that you haven't been called upon for martyrdom as many people have. And I thought, hey, that's good. <laughs> so uh, said uh, to me, so please sit again and rejoice deeply that you haven't had to endure many bleeding stripes, terrible imprisonments, deathly uh, stoning, abhorrent crucifixion, great tribulations, and the tooth and fang of wild beasts for the namesake of our ensign of the nations. And I was thinking, yeah, that sounds good to me that I'm spared that. If that's going to be uh, my future, that's good. So unto such souls, um, this one said, uh, you who have chosen such violent paths by uh, obedience, great is the glory that they will receive along with many uh, crowns of gratitude. And uh, I understand why you have asked me to sit on my right hand side. But at this point, your shortcomings are many. Uh, I had a lot of growing up. This was a vision I had 20 years ago. In the same breath, though, I, I, I have to add that it's predestined, she said to, unto me, that you'll be purified by our refiner's most fiery flames of flickering fire. And his fire of purification has been on me big time for years now. Um, he's bringing me in a little from glory to glory, from uh, strength to strength, his strength, because many times I've had none. So um, said, uh, come unto me and never forget that our splendor of righteousness has said this. And then she repeated the words of Christ. Uh, he that is faith, faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And he that is lawless, let him be lawless still. But he that is righteous, let him be righteous always. And when you make the divided uh, mind undivided, then you shall become the true spiritual being that you were fated to be. Then, due to the power of faith, you will say to the mountain of despair, move away, and it shall move away. So it then came about, uh, sitting next to this, this wondrous uh, epiphany of, the, of mo God's most merciful grace, she said, O Daniel, lover of truth, Jesus once said to his disciple, and he said this, Great is the sweat of those who labor with rock and boulders, who ascend high within a quarry. And if one should fall upon the stone of God, they would be broken. But on whomever uh, it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. I am therefore the stone which the builders rejected, the same which shall become a great cornerstone. So take his advice. Fall on the stone humbly of your own accord. Be obedient. Don't wait till it falls on you because it's not good. I've had that happen. And it was true, his words. And uh, to all men who come unto our ancient of days shall be broken. The humble man, however, willingly throws himself upon that rock of the ages, which is his unconditional love for one and all of us. So such a one, therefore, suffers not nearly as much as a man who's reluctant to do likewise because of his pride going before him. So I say unto you, uh, such a soul is always ground up pretty badly and shall need a lot more healing than those who don't drag their feet 
Furthermore, I have another vision for you. And then all of a sudden, it was like within an instant of an instant, I suddenly beheld the heavens opening up like some curtains in a theater. Um, even the clouds suddenly gathered both to the right and to the left of the horizon. And the moon then quickly seemed to disappear as the sky unexpectedly became like a great body of water be stretching out as far as my eye could see. Uh, even the blazing sun of righteousness came forth, speedily turning the deep of the night swiftly into a glorious day of true wonderment. And I was most shocked. Uh, when before my blinding eyes, the, the same six who had just left were once again standing in front of my scene, and they were walking upon the waters, being masters over the water's waves, like Jesus had walked upon the water and Peter. And from out of nowhere into somewhere, all of a sudden, multitudes of lower rank uh, Afanon angels, appearing as people, instantly appeared uh, majestically and uh, mystically. And they were also treading upon those same watery ways, uh, just like they were standing upon some dry ground. They had firm foundation under them. And it was supernatural, I could tell, because uh, uh, <laughs> the glory of the radiance was just amazing. And then several hundred cubits behind them, I suddenly noticed that there was a beach and some small hills a few miles beyond that. So this was like uh, 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 looking back. And uh, at first I didn't see it, I had to turn my head. And within the moments to follow, everything was hastily being fast forwarded miraculously. It was though I was uh, um, seeing a compressed lapse of a great amount of time, um, all happening within but an instantaneous period of a period's period. I additionally, uh, additionally, I noticed that the clothing of these angels in question were becoming really weird and somewhat unspeakable as far as the ones that looked like the women were concerned. Um, for in this vision, as it flashed before me, tunics and long robes that I was most accustomed to seeing uh, earlier in the vision, they gave way to some unusual clothing that I recognized from the future. And uh, so I, I, it was like I was seeing old-fashioned clothing and then modern clothing. Um, and then those human-looking epiphanies had some fabric stretched right down both of their legs. Uh, and I was kind of taken aback, in a sense, being flushed with many blushing blushes while seeing the long robes of hundreds of those feminine-looking angels. They seemed to become shorter. <laughs> and I was getting red in the face. It was kind of embarrassing. Now, I didn't know if it was proper for me to be looking at their forms, uh, for their garments soon rose above their knees. And I knew what Jesus said about just lusting after uh, 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 something. So, But above all, the most puzzling thing before my eyes was the work that they were busy with. Uh, and upon the waters, they were a building, some kind of an immense stone building that was speedily rising up right from out of the sea before my eyes. And it was happening fast, but yet I knew it was happening slow. And uh, all the while, those six, they seemed to be whispering in uh, the other one's ears, ministering to them or possibly directing their foot, footsteps. I wasn't really sure. And then I, uh, I knew it was a time of gathering stones from the depths of those deepest waters, as well as a season when they were stacking those stones together, one upon another, layer by layer, foot upon foot, being jointly fitted uh, together like I imagined the Tower of Babel once was. And then hundreds of those angels were bringing forth stones from the land at the very same time of all shapes and sizes. So they were coming up from the bottom of the ocean and they were coming from the land into the ocean. And nor were they using carts, wagons, or any kind of tools since God was with them. Uh, and some of these things were huge. And it, it's like in the natural, it's like, well, they better be styrofoam. But I knew somehow they weren't. So then that, um, that one of God's most graceful graces whispered softly into my ear. And she said, Dear Daniel, as you behold this most amazing amazement, bear in mind that our whitest dove of the ages spoke unto mankind through a prophet. And he said this, The righteous of God are laborers together with him, for they are his most perfect building, flawlessly designed in faith 
being joined together with incredible kind of love that's far stronger than death or any forgotten grave. And blessed are those who are united within the hope, the great hope, that God's master builder of the ages, Isa Yeshua Jesus, easily spreads out like the very best mortar. And it is that carpenter of the ages, that architect of faith alone, who laid uh, the foundation, the true foundation of love, while encouraging his most trusted creation to build thereupon. But let all of creation be now careful how they build, for so is it written that fools always build with hay, stubble, and wood, while the wise build with stones, knowing that the refiner's fire ablaze shall in no wise destroy the work of their hands. So it was a spectacular spectacle that was opening. And as my beholding continued, it was most clear to see that all of those a multitude of lesser hosts, along with all of those archangels, had somehow pulled together a kind of spectacular building of stone upon stone, rising up like a gigantic iceberg from out of those rippling blue waters. And it was easy to see that the stones within the supernatural tower was constructed with many glistening square stones. They were really square, not a little bit, and they were all joined together four square, four. Uh, and even though each stone must have weighed ton tons, judging by the mammoth size of them, it was as clear as quartz to see that people walking upon those waters were moving those stones around like they were floating bubbles, lighter than air and a uh, uh, little heavier than a feather. So it was truly fascinating, beloved, to watch hundreds within that multitude bringing forth such gigantic stones uh, to that site upon their shoulders. Somewhat, they were like ants carrying leaves that were ten so times their, their body size. So it was indeed a shocking thing to watch, a true miracle in motion. And it was a wild happening that was so utterly unbelievable that I simply didn't have any other choice except to believe it. I could not deny what I was seeing. And it was bewildering to watch hundreds upon hundreds of them moving together as one, united in purpose, and very determined and diligent to finish up what they began. And then the Lord said unto me in the Spirit, He says, This shall be humanity, working together, united in love. And I said, Okay. <laughs> And many of those faithful angelic workers were also bringing forth small mountains worth of stones out to that watery building zone, carrying them even upon their heads, trying best not to trip as they came. And then that one uh, uh, whispered to my ear again, and she said, Jesus once said this, a city built on top of a high hill and established can neither fall nor be hid if, if the light of the lighthouse is on. And in much the same way, a city built upon living waters can ne neither sink nor be found by those who would never dream of looking for such where nothing like it ever could have been built before. But without the word of God calling things as they could never be to be anyways, uh, with but a whisper of his most powerful blessings. And uh, so then it came to pass the curtains seemingly closed on the scene. And it's like the vision shifted a little bit. And then uh, suddenly uh, into clear view again, uh, I closely watched in the way those multitudes were fitting all of those stones together. And I noticed that all of the ones dragged up from the deep were then being fitted into that rising tower just as they were. And they all seemed to be fit, fitting in beautifully with all the others. And it was real easy to see that they fitted together so perfectly that their place of joining couldn't even be detected. And overall, as I allowed my eyes to inspect that tower uh, as a whole, it slowly dawned upon me that the whole thing was being put together in such a supernatural way that it looked somehow like it was only built of one stone. And I knew this was impossible because uh, I could see all these individual stones, but uh, it was there was like a, a crystalline uh, translucence before my seeing, and it had the appearance of one, even though there was many. So I also noticed that all of the stones being brought from the land, they weren't nearly as perfect as those from the deep. As a matter of fact, many times I noticed one of those six uh, that had returned were instructing uh, the angelic uh, 
the people there about to cast away every sto stone that w was mildewy or badly cracked. Uh, so perfection was being uh, demanded and asked for. So surely enough, to, uh, some were also being taken into the midst of that tower while others were being thrown not too far away from it. Uh, and some of those stones were then broken into many pieces uh, that the, seemed to hold especially true for any stones that were found to be too small, too short, too long, or too round. round. Such couldn't fit into the building. And beloved, it is just a, a fascinating thing to have a vision of God and the visions that I have had in the night uh, many times were accompanied by the breath of God and that kept me energized writing my uh, compulsive obsessively for 20 something years wasted all my time in vain Isaiah 49 4 uh, predicted that Jesus never wasted any of his time in vain even even him praying for our oneness uh, he knew that we would never unite ourselves, but he also knew he wasn't uh, wasting any of his time there because he knew he was sending forth his kingdom age covenant uh, to unite all of mankind in his love. So get ready. It's going to get good. I'm going to pause this because my, my foot's going to sleep. And so it, it came to pass. All things passed. That's a good thing. It, it came to pass, strangely, some of those stones were also being taken into the midst of that tower, while others were being thrown not too far away from it, tossed away. And some of those stones were then broken into many pieces, that, and that seemed to hold especially true for any stones that were found to be too small, too short, too long, or too round. Uh, it couldn't fit into the building. Uh, and I saw the other stones being thrown uh, a great distance away from the tower and coming to the way, and yet not staying in the way, but rolling to where there was no way. And some of those others, of the, the misshapen and irregular stones, were then falling into a great raging fire within the deepest part of the, the deeps uh, and were burning there. And uh, the Lord's Spirit spoke to me and said, These are those committing the unforgivable sin. And as I was seeing this, uh, seeing it, the heavens were closing before me, and uh, I heard the voice of this one angel say again, Never forget that our light of lights has always said that a share of glory is set apart for all righteous children by the Father of lights, not according to everything each person is, but according to everything they shall become. Praise God, he doesn't see us as we are, but as we will be. The second we pass into our the great beyond, we are as sinless as the day that we are born, for the sin is in our flesh. And after seeing such an unusual happening, I was uh, more confused, and I didn't really understand. So then I asked the, the lady, uh, I said, well, is, is such a tower a reality in heaven, or is this literal or symbolic? And uh, is so, so, and I, 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 she wouldn't even let me finish. Even before I could finish my uh, third question, she interrupted and said, Oh, Daniel, you are a really curious guy, uh, and I'm sure you have endless questions. But there is something that Christ said that shall satisfy your frustrations. Uh, for he said, There is nothing buried which shall not be raised, nor is there anything unknown that shall not be known. And that is why the mystery of God shall end under your ministry, she said unto me. So um, then she said, so let me now offer you the interpretation of all that you have just seen. And uh, once you understand it, then you may announce it to your brethren so they can share in the glory of our Alpha and Omega. But I have to caution you, many shall be exceedingly glad when they hear uh, what I shall explain, but many more shall shed a lot of tears because of the following truth. So, uh, but the saddest fact is that most people hearing about these things won't react at all. Those are they whom Jesus once declared, you hear with one ear, but the other you have closed. And yet, even people within that largest grouping shall eventually be very glad indeed if their hearts have any ears, should they repent. But you need to know that these revelations have an end. Here then is the meaning of this parable of the tower, O messenger of the Lord's truest kingdom age truths. Uh, the tower which he saw being built is, uh, is the church, 
which has now been uh, seen of you uh, now and uh, later. Uh, and the reason that you saw the church being built upon those living waters is because every believer's life is saved by the, the water of love within them, which he sends forth to every single person uh, when they're born through the Holy Ghost. And those holy angels that you beheld are the same ones uh, that were created uh, by God before Adam's race ever came forth. Uh, and they have instructions from on high to help his church increase and to even give a hand in its building. And all of the people bringing up uh, stones, the angelic ones, uh, from far, uh, from afar, represents the faithful few of our Lord all throughout the following generations and up right back to the beginning of time. And therefore it should, shall be that their hands alone, through their hands alone, that the finishing touches will come about but as you saw they were they were not working with their own strength for our lord of lords allowed all of his elect to move within his uh, limitless power and praise god for that uh, and once the tower is is complete um sh she said uh, uh our our lord of lords allows all of his elect to move within his limitless power and once it's fully complete, she added that the sign of Jonah shall then swiftly be, which shall actually be a brand new beginning, one much glorious, more glorious than any that have begun. And I somehow knew that uh, she meant that just as Nineveh was not destroyed in Jonah 3, that uh, neither would the great rising great tribulation do the damage that people have thought that God would uh, would 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 again resound the words of jeremiah 30 24 for i knew he said that if we uh, he would return his terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great uh, tribulation that would kill billions of us if we would join together in love and i knew that from beforehand because the lord had had me studying to show myself approved so she said unto me but i need to caution you with some great caution so you won't become prideful overseeing all of the things that you have. Therefore, to be honest with you, there are many others in the world that are worthy of being shown these mysteries of God. And some of those are even more worthy than you are presently. But God chose you because he doesn't see you as you are, but as you shall become. So take no pride in your current spiritual uh, standing. For many of uh, his people uh, have been uh, at a, a better place of spirituality than you. Your your soul has not been upright because you have been alcoholic. And uh, so have I been since I was 16. And uh, so then she added, nor should you ever forget the words of the living word of God who allows his bride the church, uh, who awaits his bride. Many are they standing at the door, but the blessed ones are they who shall enter the bridal chamber and those do not seek to increase from little for such lovers of my desires from greater to, to be less uh, while they decrease so the Lord can increase within them and even though she explained most of the important things I asked so pray tell me well, what what did the stones themselves mean and what about the fire and uh, when when would the tower be finished so she said Daniel Shiloh Elijah. Uh, it's obvious if you meditate on the parable, but I'll explain it anyways. Uh, she said, now insofar as those stones were concerned, those that are squared and white, they join, fit together in their joints. Though these are they, the apostles and deacons who walked after the holiness of Adonai. Uh, these are those who exercised their offices in both purity and sanctity for the elect of God. And because they usually agreed with one another, they had great peace among themselves, listening to each other with the greatest kind of respect. Therefore, their join, joinings fit very well together within the tower. But the stones that were dragged up from the depth of the great deep were all those who had suffered much for his name's sake. They too were being fit into the building with great harmony. And the stones from the dry land not yet shaped are those souls that the Lord approved of since they performed his commandments and pleaded his blood as the only atonement for their sins, whether they realized it or not. And I'm sure that if you notice during the visions that many stones were also placed 
within the tower. Uh, those are they who are young in the faith, not always faithful, but those are warned by the angels to do good or else they would enter the, the road of perishing as they let their love light go out uh, because some wickedness uh, was found in them that was driving them towards lovelessness. However, when it came to all of the stones that were being thrown away, not too far from the tower are those rejected because of their sin, uh, and they reject themselves because uh, they're destroyed by their own lack of knowledge and their own ignorance. But uh, because they desired to repent, they were not cast far away. For that reason, our son of adoration has said this, He who has been forgiven of much loves much, for there is a shame that leads unto death, and there is a shame that leads unto life. But she said, but you should also understand that if it wasn't for such stubborn kind of stones, the gospel never would have been uh, anything like it was. Even Jesus stressed that when he said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. For the heavenly Father desires that over, over the punishment of evil. Therefore the stones shall yet be very useful, being added to the tower once they repent, as long as it's still being built. And then shall they be very strong in the true faith of love. But it's very important that you understand that if the tower becomes finished before they repent, such stones would be cast away and left behind, and they would never be part of it. For in a twinkling of an eye it will come about that the tower would be unexpectedly finished, and when it, uh, it, it, it would just vanish from off the face of the earth in but a moment when the holy trumps of heaven are blown at the end of uh, the kingdom age. And um, know that the, the uh, calling away is when people join their hearts with Christ on the great white cloud of Revelation 14 and Matthew 24 when he comes. And he, he announces now that the other stones that you saw being broken into pieces, being cast away, were sons of wickedness who let their light of love go out. They were fully reprobate, accepting to live by love. Truly it were better never to have been formed uh, for, for them than to have suffered such cruel torments. For imagine a man suffering torments in every part of his body who, who have no one to show him compassion, uh, everlasting without love but is mocked of all. In, in a single hour of the joyful dwelling of the, the, those of love are more precious than a thousand years among sinners, in so much as their weeping and their lamentation shall never come to an end, and their te tears will not cease, uh, nor shall they find themselves consolation ever, ever. So, beloved, beloved,